Diversity and heterogeneity are a part of God's design for the universe. We see it in nature as it reflects the beauty and richness diversity brings to our lives. Everyone is both similar in some ways and different in many other ways. Each of us is a unique expression of the Father's image. Collectively, like a multifaceted diamond, we reflect His character and nature in the world. Our diversity, therefore, is a part of God's very design for a functioning world, enabling us to live in interdependent ways, sharing our strengths and weaknesses to reveal to the world the beautiful character of God. Yet, we are different as human beings, which either brings joy and abundance to life or causes much strife and prejudice. Sadly, being different has led us to believe that one is better than the other instead of recognizing that the differences make us unique. And across cultures and continents, the difference is often seen as a threat or a consideration that those different from us are lesser humans or just not worth consideration. This different is bad mindset leads to exclusion in many forms. For example, we exclude those who eat differently, look different, speak differently, dress up different. Extreme exclusion can even lead to murder, war and genocide. Example, the Holocaust. In India too, exclusion is a norm. It's inbuilt into cultures across the land. A person can be excluded for his race, caste, the color of skin, gender, age, diet, religion, income, or disability. The list goes on. Those excluded then go on excluding those they see as different, further winding the vicious cycle. Emmanuel Hospital Association has worked to facilitate inclusion for more than 50 years. We do this because inclusion lies at the heart of EHA's vision. Fellowship for Transformation Through Caring It began when we saw that rural communities, specifically women and children, were excluded from healthcare. So we established hospitals to provide health care. When communities found it hard to reach hospitals, teams from our hospitals started reaching out to the communities with clinics and providing essential health training, offering health care, immunization, maternal and child care, and health education. As the access to health care improved, we noticed that people's participation in their health and development was limited due to poverty, illiteracy, gender, caste and lack of awareness. So, our teams worked with communities to empower and educate people to participate in their health and development by bringing them in for capacity building. As a result, our hospitals became training centres where people from the community came in to learn together. As the relationship grew deeper, under the layer of poverty and gender, we found people previously unseen, unheard and invisible. People with disabilities, especially children, low caste and the urban poor, who were voiceless and due to the systems and structures of culture and beliefs, were excluded by our teams and communities. Recognizing this failure led to a collaborative approach where we spent more time with them to learn and grow together. We visited people in their homes and communities, building relationships that provided the foundation for recognizing them as valuable people 
created in the image of God. Just being with them affirmed a sense of purpose and opened a vista of possibilities beyond their limitations. And so, a journey of building structures for inclusion and participation started. Our mindsets were challenged with inclusive groups and programs, but together, we found ways forward, reaching out, bringing in, and being with helped create structures and systems to facilitate inclusion. In addition, there were local movements of women, persons with disabilities participating in life and community. We realized that there had to be more when over time, gains made through these structures stagnated or were lost altogether. Reflecting on our journey, we saw that people's underlying beliefs limited inclusion. These beliefs were further shaped by culture, education and a limited understanding of God's word. Yet, they persisted despite all the workshops, structures, incomes and participation. Further, it was our attitude, behaviour and worldview that were the barriers to true inclusion. At times, even our teams practised exclusion because they saw others as different from themselves. We then saw that what we did in reaching out, bringing in and being with could create the structures that would provide safe spaces for deeper reflection. The foundations of mutual trust and respect that we had built and how we shared our lives with our co-workers and marginalized people could help make the tough, heart-to-heart -to -heart conversations possible with teams and communities. So we went back to God's Word and found that inclusion is at the core of God's heart. He created us in His image, both men and women, wanting His people to love and accept as He does. This started our journey of becoming one with what we ought to be in Christ. This meant being with the marginalized as equals, not just as those who have something to give, but who could share life and space as friends. Our reflections on suffering and its purpose, especially in the context of disability, led us to invite the differently abled into our homes, what we call the Luke 14 banquets. As someone said, it's easy to be the doctor in the OPD who has to treat the patient, but having them at a dinner table Relating to them personally as people was a challenge, but a beautiful experience. Through reflection on what God says about exclusion, we began to pursue becoming inclusive, like Jesus. As a result, we developed a six-lesson course called Pleroma, a word in Greek that means fullness of Christ. Fullness of God in Colossians chapter 2 verse 9 dwells in Christ and through Jesus and His Spirit dwells in us. That fullness should define our identity in Christ, affirm the identity of others and lead to forgiveness and reconciliation if there is exclusion and strife. Available both online and offline it is a reflective journey that explores identity, exclusion and a four-step process of inclusion involving embrace and most importantly, forgiveness. Reflection, we realized, was a vital tool to facilitate profound changes because we are challenged to change our hearts and attitudes. Participants themselves reflected how the change started in their thoughts, being made new by the renewing of their minds. Participant 1 When I started this course, I thought it would be something related to our community work. But 
but as we started learning, I understood the value of Christ's inclusiveness and how we so casually never even think about these aspects and how we tend to exclude people. Participant 2 As a Christian for many years, I could never see how we behave in the church and how we tend to be a blockade for others to believe in Christ as we act like modern-day Pharisees. We are responsible for people not coming to Christ because of our attitude and exclusion of the people around us. It is a journey we continue with God. It's a journey of the heart.